Amidst the echoes of history, the Vikings emerge as both fierce warriors and enigmatic figures. Their legacy is etched in tales of brutal conquests, a symphony of swords clashing, and a world forever marked by their relentless pursuit of power. In this video, we are going to be talking about the most disgusting things that were normal to Vikings. From the perspective of modern men, the Vikings established many weird and dangerous traditions. Between 800 and 1100, Vikings, Norsemen, emigrated to find their fortunes. They attacked British coastal monasteries, especially unattended ones. They were pirates, raiders, traders, and settlers in Britain, Europe, Iceland, Greenland, and Newfoundland. Contrary to popular belief, the Vikings did not share a history or nationalism for three centuries. The most famous Vikings were from Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Sami, Finnish, and Estonia. They were not Christians and not local civilized from a faraway country. Vikings were very different in their way of handling situations, and one would be shocked about the most disgusting things that were normal to Vikings. Vikings spent their free time farming, hunting, and fishing, despite regular raids. Unlike many other peoples at the period, the Vikings had unusual traditions and customs. For example, uttering this was enough to make a deal. Today, it's hard to imagine that lying might result in death on par with murder and robbery. Thus, old breakers and liars would have drowned in the river. In the Scandinavian afterlife, such people would drown daily in the underground river of Scandinavia. Viking believed it was wrong to discuss a relative's grief unless they wanted help. Anger was unworthy of a Viking, thus they never argued with them. The Scandinavians believed that mocking was followed by a troll who would take out the target's tongue, therefore never mock a stranger. Also, the Vikings were very sensitive about losing troops in the battlefield, rarely leaving them behind. The most intriguing part is that the Valkyries took the fallen warriors to Odin because the only honorable death was in warfare. Elderly people who died at home were sent to the goddess Hell World. In old age, the opponent would have every right to mog the victim for choosing an unmasculine form of death, making it more unbecoming. Because of this, senior Vikings advised their relatives to murder them ceremonially before death. Procopius of Caesarea wrote about this. Once one of them died from an illness or old age, he had no choice but to request that his kin take him off the living as soon as possible. And after they built a big high pile of firewood and placed him on top of it, someone who wasn't a family member with a knife would be sent to him. The murderer isn't supposed to know this person. After learning of their family's murder, they set fire to the entire pile of wood from the bottom, gather the bones and bury them in the earth. Any invasion aimed to improve one's life and the abducted men and women's. Many slaves were taken prisoner to be released for a ransom. And if no payment was expected, they stayed home, except for artisans. Men who did most of the slave labor might marry with their master's permission. Since Viking marriages were not considered family, girls and women helped Viking wives at home. Women slaves sometimes held high positions in Viking families while having no rights, and some joined the Vikings on campaigns to satisfy sexual cravings. It's interesting that Vikings could become slaves, but his relatives might repurchase him if he couldn't pay off the debt if they could prove they used their own land. If it was invalid, the owner would get all the slave's goods as a ransom. The master was responsible for the slave's behavior, but the slave's children were also slaves from birth. If a slave killed someone, the master dealt with the family. Remember that the Vikings considered the death of a slave a terrible dishonor that could lead to bloody revenge from the slave's family against the master. However, ignoring these encounters shows that the Vikings defended slaves because they understood not every battle would be lucky. Norwegian Vikings raided Lindisfarne Monastery in northeastern England in 793 AD, starting the Viking Age until 1066. The Vikings hammered Europe's shoreline and gender-selective infanticide may have skewed their male-to-female ratio. Researchers believe the Vikings conquered Europe to marry, not pillage. DNA testing on modern Icelanders supports this hypothesis. Vikings inhabited Iceland over a millennium ago, so academics were able to identify its settlers. Female settlers were 63% British Isles, and male settlers were 80% Norwegian. This suggests that Norwegian Viking invasion zone men and women regularly entered. 
Iceland is unlikely to have been visited alone by the women. Viking women learned about war wounds from the gory and horrific warfare they witnessed every day. Viking ladies developed a way to assess knife or slash wounds. After eating onion, leek, and herb stew, the women smelled the wound of the wounded warrior. Only warriors who potentially benefit from treatment would be treated. Viking laws differed greatly from today's. It was illegal to disrespect a high-ranking person, yet sometimes lawful to assassinate them. A murderer may be slain by the victim's family. This caused frequent tribal warfare. A criminal organization called house gangs could also settle disagreements. These conflicts occasionally killed. Someone who had been wronged challenged someone to a duel within a week. A stand-in challenge may be utilized if needed. The challenger read various location-specific restrictions before the bout. The rules determined who might strike first, how many shields were allowed, which weapon could be used, how the winner was chosen, and what the winner received. Some home gangs could only be beaten by killing one of their opponents. If the challenged person missed the duel, they were guilty. Any citizen may justify murdering the accused if the crime was heinous. If the clan chief skips the duel, a slave can legally murder him. Vikings love blood sports and fight like ballet, not UFC. Viking swimming competitions were dangerous and deadly. They loosely use that word to try how long one man can immerse his opponent. Men undoubtedly perished because they couldn't escape security. In another game, two teams play full contact keep away with a ball. Despite its violent reputation, it was only played once a year in the autumn. The Vikings also prized wrestling. It kept them fit and ready for battle even when they weren't raiding settlements. If playing games wasn't deadly enough, brawls and fights can happen anytime. One account involved kids playing a game. A six-year-old child jammed an axe into his head after being roughed up by another kid during a game. Due to the violence of the games, arguments might become blood feuds if not settled on the pitch. One skilled warrior had to watch from the sidelines. Paganism sacrifices witnessing a blot on the winter solstice, Arab adventurer Al Tartucci told how they held a celebration on the winter, spring, summer, and autumn solstices to worship the deity and eat and drink. This happened four times a year at the farm's entrance. A sacrificed animal is staked, and the killer removes the head. He must sacrifice for God and for everyone to see. Some gods just require material goods or money as tributes, but Odin Lord of Valhalla often required a living sacrifice considering his status. Archaeological evidence shows that animals and humans were hanged and bloodied for ceremonial sacrifice. The saga of Harold Fairhair's son hawking the excellent details a gigantic blot sacrifice at a neighboring temple. The temple's spectators were splattered with the blood of sacrificial animals, especially horses. The flesh was sacrificed, consecrated, and consumed heartily. According to the Harvara Saga 6, a sacred tree in Uppsala, a Norse religious site, was adorned with horses' blood during many toasts to Odin. The festival of Hestov Hestov, a terrible combat between two stallions, began in Norway during the Viking Age, particularly in the Icelandic Commonwealth between 930 and 1262 CE. Viking culture and society with wild Hesta horses competing for mates. The Hestog, a man-made competition, showed horses strength and selected the best for breeding. When two stallions were introduced to a mare in heat, the mare was chained in the center of the enclosure, or occasionally outside, but still within the other horse's scent range to provoke competition. Interesting, right? Well, for more thrilling stories like this, be sure to subscribe and turn on post notification to be the first to know when the next post is up. Her horses would be frightened or lashed into fighting, and if they resisted, the Hess session would endure 15 minutes to 3 hours with shots added to break up the relentless beast. The scary Eric the Red Eric Thorvaldsen was too vicious for the Vikings, who were fierce warriors. Eric was born in Norway around 950 and went to Iceland as a kid. Eric's moniker comes from his fiery nature and red hair. In Haukedal, Iceland in 980, Eric's workers caused a landslip that destroyed his neighbor's residence. Eric and his family lived in one of the two colonies for life. Son Leif Eriksson was the first European to sail to North America and found colonies 500 years before Columbus. It's no surprise they invented the Blood Eagle. 
One of the cruelest and most torturous techniques of this execution was cutting out the victim's lungs and hanging them over his shoulders to give the illusion of wings via the brutalization gap. Only two Norse tales mention the Blood Eagle, although others do. Both victims were royals murdered by a son in retribution for their father's death, showing that this method was only utilized for particular purposes. Torf Inar sacrificed half Dan Holeg, half Dan Longleg, to Odin. Einar gave him to Odin for his triumph by carving an eagle on his back with a sword, removing the ribs from the backbone and dragging out the lungs. He claimed Ivar the boneless killed La of Northumbria in 867 CE to avenge his father, Ragnar Lobrock, as told in Ragnar's Sons. After being arrested in York after a struggle, they carved a bloody eagle on La's back, removed all his ribs, and ripped out his lungs. The Vikings lived up to their ferocious reputation, horrifying and tough punishments given to offenders in the past. Shocking revelation. Click on the next video to find out more now.